our second page, page four really, of lesson one. And in this section, we're gonna do what we call the getting started. So after we lesson launch and spiral review, then we're gonna follow up with some sort of like entry like level of conversation. This one is all about the dependent versus independent quantity. When we talk about situations, so our situation, um, have you ever planned a party? You may have purchased ice, gone grocery shopping, selected music, made food, or even cleaned in preparation and many times, these tasks depend on doing another task first. For example, you wouldn't make food before grocery shopping, would you? No, the idea behind that is what is dependent versus independent. And so for us, we need to be able to analyze the sentence, this description of what's happening, and then decide, is uh, this scenario describing a dependent quantity and an independent quantity and which one goes first? Could you see the reverse of it? Let's get into it. Consider the two quantities that are changing in each relationship. The number of movie tickets purchased and the total cost. The number of eggs used and the number of cakes baked. The number of students in attendance at school and the number of lunches served. The number of hours driven and the number of miles to a vacation destination. And the number of minutes a swimming pool is filled with water. And the number of gallons in the swimming pool. See, we're going to circle the independent quantity and we're going to underline the dependent quantity in each relationship. And I've got some highlighters. I've got a little bit of highlight color going on here that I'm not too emphatic about. But let's go ahead and take a look at this one. I'm going to say that we're going to circle slash highlight yellow, the independent quantity. And we're going to underline slash highlight pink, the dependent quantity underline, sorry, underline in the situation. Let me do the first one. And that's what I've actually got set up down here. So of course, pause the video, skip forward, skip back, depending on what you need so that you can gather the content of this uh, information. And remember, one quantity, depending on the other in a problem situation, it is going to be the dependent quantity. And if the quantity depends on, that quantity that it depends on is called the independent. So like my word wall words, to be independent means you can support yourself. Things depend on you. You do not depend on others. And in mathematics, we describe that relationship like this. The number of movie tickets purchased and the total cost. Honestly, total cost like money is always calculated after we know some information. So the total cost for number one is going to be the dependent and therefore it gets underlined. The number of movie tickets, you know, gosh, it's like $14 right now for a movie ticket. So if you're going to take six people to the movies, you're going to need six times 14. If you take a different number of people to the movies, then the overall total cost is going to be a different amount. So the number of movie tickets is our independent. And that's why I'm going to go ahead and put a circle around it. So then down here, Describe how you can determine which quantity is independent and which quantity is dependent, depending on the problem situation. Cost is usually calculated after knowing a quantity. So total cost is dependent. And like, uh, likewise, number of movie tickets. The number of something that you have that then is going to be costing in an amount, a total amount, that number is the independent quantity. Let me try number two because I'm also ready to write about number two. And then maybe I'll skip a couple and say you should pause the video and try it yourself. And then let's see if we can meet in the middle. Number two, the number of eggs used and the number of cakes baked. This is almost like a what do you want versus what are you going to get situation. If you want to make three cakes, then you're looking at your recipe or you have done it often enough that you understand how many eggs it will take for one cake. So there's kind of like a argument to be made that either the number of eggs you used or the number of cakes baked, either of those could be the independent quantity depending on how you argue it. But we should probably argue it along the lines of this. The number of eggs used shows up first in the sentence. And then the number of cakes baked shows up last in the sentence. 
It's not always what goes first and what goes last, but it might be arguable that you can't make six cakes if you don't have you know, 18 eggs, three per cake, that sort of thing, right? So you are looking at your raw material and then you're turning that raw material into some sort of finished product and the number of items of finished product totally depends on raw material. But you could totally flip that around and this is one of those times where sometimes in mathematics we call this an inverse relationship and an inverse relationship is also still a valid relationship. To bake a cake you need, you need eggs. If you want to bake five cakes then you need to know how many eggs you have. So cakes is dependent on the number of eggs you have. Okay, I wrote a little bit and I've left three, four, and of course you can kind of see my structure for five here. One comment, if you're ever running out of room on your paper, get another piece of paper and go ahead and add it. And just put this into your notebook or your notes or your binder, however you're keeping track of the information we do. Why don't you go ahead and pause the video and do three, four, and five, and then come back and listen to my response about five, okay? While you've paused it, I'm gonna go ahead and resume. So if you resume at any time, you'll see me working on three, four, and five as well. But you should pause right here and just see if you know what you're doing. And this honestly could be the last like minute of your video, okay? Number three, the number of students in attendance at school and the number of lunches served. You know, if they don't have students in the school building, then there's no lunches that are gonna be served. And lunches does not dictate people showing up to school. So the number of students is independent and the number of lunches served is dependent. Number four, the number of hours driven and the number of miles to a vacation destination. You know, we, we measure things in terms of miles per hour. So if you want to know how many miles you've driven or how many more you have left to drive, it depends on how fast you're going and how fast you're going multiplied by the time you've spent driving. So if it's 70 miles per hour from here to Seattle and you've been driving for two hours, then two times 70, you've gone 140 miles. You're not there yet. Okay, the number of hours driven is the independent quantity. The number of miles to a vacation destination is the dependent quantity. But this is another one of those scenarios where you could flip it around. You could say, I know it's 160 miles to Portland and it's uh, roughly 70 miles per hour. So if I do 160 miles to Portland and I divide by 70, then I'm gonna know how much time it's gonna take. That's an inverse relationship from this way where independent and dependent quantity switch. And it's totally okay in some circumstances. Here's one of those circumstances. The number of minutes a swimming pool is filled with water and the number of gallons of water in the swimming pool. So the number of minutes a swimming pool is filled with water and the number of gallons of water in the pool. This is the probably the best way to figure out which of those quantities is independent or dependent. That your time number of minutes is independent. In fact, that's what I said for my sentence for number five. And you should also have like a three here and a four here. It's just, where are you gonna put them? Maybe on another piece of paper. The time it takes to do something is usually that quantity that predicts something else, like gallons of water. So, time that it takes to fill the swimming pool is independent. Thank you guys so much for watching page four. This has been page four of the Getting Started. The next video is gonna be page five, you know, go sequentially. And we're gonna talk about our first activity of this algebra one, module one, topic one, lesson one, activity one. See you in the next episode. Don't forget, like, comment, and subscribe.